this is like a big difference between Western science and Chinese science, especially talking about in healing. Chinese healing focused focused at the very beginning, not on the body, not on the cells to begin with, but focus on the formation of the universe. At the time, the the concept of universe mainly is the solar system. They discover something is very interesting. Every year we have a 12 month, and we have 12 major energy channels in the body. And the original founding of energy points, now people call it acupuncture point, are 365 points. When you look at the inner uh, classic, inner classic of yellow emperor, and you will find this information. This is like uh, the first most fundamental book who, which set the whole dynamic and system of Chinese medicine. And any medicine or the techniques of medicine in, in a Chinese, I mean a Chinese medicine, you call it like a uh, acupuncture, tuina, cupping, qigong, tai chi, they all came from this book. It is that powerful, this book. They saw the study the nature, the land, trees, observation of the behavior of animals, then they found out there's something very unique existing in the universe, and this thing is Qi. Qi creates everything. Qi has yin and yang, and the body actually is the miniature of the universe. That's why they call this body is a small universe. Amazing. Whatever we are doing today here has an effect in the universe. Long time ago, Lao Tzu already said that. Then how we can apply this philosophy into our healing then? That is a very, very important reach, reaching the science into health, the science into spirituality, and science into emotional balancing. And through a deeper study, they found out this chi has three levels, basically. The first level is as a form of a material force. It runs like an electricity, runs through the body, making everything moving. And then the second level is, it has consciousness. This chi knows what to do for you in the body. And the chi has intelligence. The intelligence includes the blueprint, the life pattern of your life, and also the intelligence of the entire universe. That is the key understanding of this miraculous healing cases studies like my friend just shared with me no medicine practice in qigong and my colon cancer disappeared as you go into that moment of serenity you tap into the consciousness of the qi you allow the qi to work for you through the consciousness you wake up the intelligence you connect to the intelligence of your life, of the universe. That intelligence has all the information to help you to re-download the information of your life. That's the moment complete healing takes place. So after a lot of studies with this T, I found out in our life, no matter who you are, we are doing two things. Number one, we are having fun every day. We want to have fun every day, right? You want to become a doctor because that will bring you fun. That's why you want to become a doctor. You want to become a carpenter because doing the carpenter work, you know, giving me so much joy. Having fun. The thing is, you work with your chi to make sure you have fun. Two things. You work with the chi to make sure you have fun, to guarantee you have fun. Our chi 
installed inside has all the information of the entire universe. This is the way of life. We need to follow the principles, the law of the qi, to operate our life. It's time for you to go to bed. You should sleep, but you stay up three days in a row, three nights in a row drinking. What is going to happen to you? You're not going to have fun anymore. You see, it is just like that simple. I like something simple. Now here comes two questions. How can we activate this qi to work for the body? How can we work well with this qi so that we can enjoy our life better? Chinese ancestors are just so smart in this way. In Dr. Qing, and also in the Yellow Emperor book, the inner classic of the Yellow Emperor, he says, the best healing is to heal with no medicine and no any other tools. Just work with the chi. And then the second, the lower class of healing. And so then you learn something, how to manipulate the chi flow, like an acupuncture or medicine, to ignore this, this kind of things. Because the first category is so simple and it is so mysterious, people don't like it. Because it is too simple. People don't believe it. And people like to have something to grab in hands, I gain something. So the needles, herbal medicine will work. The people who live the longest life follow the law of the universe. What do you want to really harvest the true joy in our life from the universe. Now we need to follow the nature of the qi, helping the qi, number one, physically move in the body. Number two, emotionally, in a consciousness level, to help to activate that source, to guide the qi flow in the right direction. And then the third level is, Read down low or always connect to the intelligence of the body to help the body constantly making the balance of yin and yang, making the balance of five elements inside the body. If you have time to get into the void, meditating through meditation, qigong to through qigong movements, you can cultivate the qi in these three levels, physical, mental, and spiritual. Qi flow as a force in the body, and then the, uh, the emotion, the consciousness, and then the intelligence, and all the life pattern, I mean the life blueprint in the body got activated. Now here, I show you something very simple. First of all, you need to work with your body. So everybody, I want you to hold, put your feet flat on the floor. I want, to, I want you to experience this. You can get into that intelligent level very quickly to read down low information from the universe to balance your yin and yang and clear energy blockages and heal yourself. Longer you can stay in that spot, faster you can heal yourself. So first of all, hold the ball in, in front of you. Hold the ball. Once you hold your hands like this, the six meridians in your hands got activated. The lungs, large intestines, heart, triple heaters, small intestines, and another heart channel. They all have a, a great connection to your limb system, to your immune system, to your heart. So that's why Qigong has a lot to do with the hands. So you activate. By holding the hands like this, you activate the channels in your body. It is just like a symbol. This is like something this is so unique. You believe it, it works. You don't believe it, it still works. So up to you. Hold it now. You say in your mind. Tell the universe, tell your body what you want. For instance, I want to heal my arthritis in my back. I want to heal my arthritis in my knee. Or I want to heal my tumors in my breast. Tell your body this is what you want so that your chi will have a purpose to work for you. All right? Now, after, after that, then you put a smile on your face. 
Smile, S-M-I-L-E, stands for. And my spin for Qigong friends, start my internal love engine. Thank you. You activate that love energy, that, that beautiful consciousness inside. And then you hold that beautiful little smile on your face. And then you start moving your hand. I want you to roll the ball up and down. And you feel happy. This is you in insert emotion, the consciousness. Once you feel happy, that energy automatically goes to the liver to strengthen your immune system, your limb system. It's very good stuff. We are working every day so hard. It's for happiness. Now happiness is right inside the ball <laughs> in front of you. So. You more move your hands gently. Now slow down, slowly, as slow as you can go. So now you are working in two dimension now, the physical and the emotional. Now I want you to go up to the third dimension. You work with intelligence. Now what you do? I want you to close your eyes. Continue to move your hand. Now you tell your body, "I completely surrender my mind to my intelligence, to my soul, to my heart, and allow my heart to direct the movement of my hands." So now you don't control your movement anymore. You simply just allow your hands to move. In their own way, then your mind focus on the feeling of this moment. How good you feel? What is the tingling sensation in your hands? How that feels to you? And you you stop feeling. That magnetic field in between your hands, you start to feel it—the tingling sensation in different parts of the body. Focus on those feelings, and you allow your hands to move in their own way. When you allow the hands to move in their own way, then we call it Wu Wei. Wu Wei means. You're doing nothing with your mind, but you achieve everything. All these miracles happen only when you get into this movement, especially healing those called life-threatening, uncurable diseases. So that is beautiful. Now slowly hold your hands like a ball in front of you. You don't move your hands anymore. Give one, give yourself a couple seconds to feel the energy in between your hands. To feel this kind of a breeze flowing in between your hands, your fingers. Focus on that moment. Feel it. Now I want you to bring your focus to your lower dantian, which is deep in behind the navel. See, there's a light shining inside. And you see the light as an energy ball spinning, spinning, spinning. Getting brighter, smaller, and then it becomes an energy pill, and you tuck it deep in behind the navel. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes and rub your hands together. And 
massage your face. And massage your ears. From the impersonal life, I am. To you who read, I speak. To you who through long years and much running to and fro have been eagerly seeking in books and teachings, in philosophy and religion, for you know not what, truth, happiness, freedom, God. To you whose soul is weary and discouraged and almost destitute of hope, to you who many times have obtained a glimpse of that truth only to find when you followed and tried to reach it, that it disappeared in the beyond and was but the mirage of the desert. To you who thought you had found it in some great teacher, who was perhaps the acknowledged head of some society, fraternity, or religion, and who appeared to you to be a master, so marvelous was the wisdom he taught and the works he performed, only to awaken later to the realization that that master was but a human personality with faults and weaknesses and secret sins, the same as you, even though that personality may have been a channel through which were voiced many beautiful teachings, which seemed to you the highest truth. And here you are, soul a-weary and unhungered, and not knowing where to turn. To you, I am come. Likewise, to you, who have begun to feel the presence of that truth within your soul, and seek the confirmation of that which of late has been vaguely struggling for living expression within. Yes, to all who hunger for the true bread of life, I am come. Are you ready to partake? If so, then arouse yourself, sit up, still your human mind, and follow closely my word here and spoken, or you will turn away disappointed once more, with the aching hunger still in your heart. I, who am I? I, who speak with such seeming knowledge and authority? Listen, I am you, that part of you who is and knows, who knows all things and always knew and always was. Yes, I am you, yourself, that part of you who says I am and is I am that transcendent innermost part of you which quickens within as you read, which responds to this my word, which perceives its truth, which recognizes all truth and discards all air wherever found, not that part which has been feeding on air all these years. For I am your real teacher, the only real one you will ever know, and the only master I your divine self. I, the I am of you, bring to you this my message, my living word, as I have brought to you everything in life, be it a book or master, to teach you that I, and I alone, your own true self, am the teacher for you, the only teacher and the only God, who is and always has been providing you not only with the bread and wine of life, but with all things needed for your physical, mental, and spiritual growth and sustenance. Therefore, that which appeals to you as you read is my message, spoken to your outer human consciousness from within, and is but a confirmation of that which the I am of you always knew within, but had not yet translated in definite, tangible terms to your outer consciousness. Likewise, all that ever appealed to you, coming from some outward expression, was but the confirmation of my word already spoken within. The outward expression was the avenue or means I chose at the time through which to reach and impress your human or self-consciousness. I am 
not your human mind, nor its child, the intellect. They are but the expression of your being, as you are the expression of my being. They are but phases of your human personality, as you are a phase of my divine impersonality. Weigh and study carefully these words. Rise up. Rise up and free yourself now and for always from the domination of your personality with its self-inflated and self-glorifying mind and intellect. For your mind, henceforth, must be your servant and the intellect your slave, if my word is to penetrate your soul consciousness. I am come now to your soul consciousness, which I have quickened expressly in preparation for the reception of my word. Now, if you are strong enough to bear it, if you can put aside all your private personal fancies, beliefs, and opinions, which are but the rubbish you have gathered from the dumping ground of others, if you are strong enough to cast them all away, then my word will be to you a source of endless joy and blessing. Be prepared to have this personality of yours doubt my word as you read it all along the way. For its very life is threatened, and it knows it cannot live and thrive and longer dominate your thinking, your feelings, your going and coming, as of old. If you take my word into your heart and permit it there to abide. Yes, I am come to you now to make you conscious of my presence. For I have likewise prepared your human mind so that it can, in a measure, comprehend the meaning of me. I have been with you always, but you did not know it. I have purposely led you through the wilderness of books and teaching, of religions and philosophies, keeping ever before your soul's eye the vision of the promised land, feeding you with the mana of the desert, that you might remember and value and long for the bread of the Spirit. Now I have brought you to the river Jordan that separates you from your divine heritage. Now the time has come for you consciously to know me. The time has come for you to cross over into Canaan, the land of milk and honey. Are you ready? Do you want to go? Then follow this my word, which is the ark of my covenant, and you shall go over dry shod. Book 3, Part 2 Be still, and know, I am God. Now, in order that you may learn to know me, so that you can be sure it is I, your own true self, who speak these words, you must first learn to be still, to quiet your human mind and body and all their activities, so that you no longer are conscious of them. You may not yet be able to do this, but I will teach you how, if you really want to know me and are willing to prove it by trusting me and obeying me in all that I now shall call upon you to do. Listen. Try to imagine the I who speaks throughout these pages as being your higher or divine self, addressing and counseling your human mind and intellect, which you will consider for the moment as being a separate personality. Your human mind is so constituted that it cannot accept anything which does not conform with what it has previously experienced or learned and which its intellect does not consider reasonable. Therefore, in addressing it, you are using such terms and expressions as will most clearly explain to your intellect the truths it must understand before the mind can awaken to the consciousness of your meaning. The fact is, this I is yourself your real self. Your human mind has heretofore been so engrossed with the task of supplying its intellect and body with all manner of selfish indulgences that it has never had time to get acquainted with the real you, its true lord and master. You have been so interested in and affected by the pleasures and sufferings of your body and intellect that you have almost come to believe you are your intellect and body, and you have consequently nearly forgotten me, your divine self. I am not your intellect and body, and this message is to teach you that you and I 
are one. The words I hear and speak and the main burden of these instructions is to awaken your consciousness to this great fact. You cannot awaken to this fact until you can get away from the consciousness of this body and intellect which so long have held you enslaved. You must feel me within before you can know I am there. Now in order that you can become wholly oblivious of your mind and its thoughts and your body and its sensations so that you can feel me within, it is necessary that you studiously obey these my instructions. Sit quietly in a relaxed position and when wholly at ease, let your mind take in the significance of these words. Be still and know, I am God. Without thinking, allow this, my divine command, to penetrate deep into your soul. Let whatever impressions that come to your mind enter at will, without effort or interference on your part. Note carefully their import, for it is I within, through these impressions, instructing you. Then, when somewhat of their vital significance begins to dawn upon your consciousness, speak these, my words, slowly, imperatively, to every cell of your body, to every faculty of your mind, with all the conscious power you possess. Be still and know, I am God. Speak them just as they are here and written trying to realize that the God of you commands and demands of your mortal self implicit obedience. Study them. Search out their hidden potency. Brood over them. Carry them with you into your work, whatever it may be. Make them the vital, dominating factor in your work, in all your creative thoughts. Say them a thousand times a day until you have discovered all my innermost meaning until every cell of your body thrills in joyful response to the command, be still, and instantly obeys. And every vagrant thought hovering around your mind hides itself off into nothingness. Then, as the words reverberate through the caverns of your now empty being, then, as the sun of knowing begins to rise on the horizon of your consciousness, then will you feel the swell of a wondrous strange breath, filling you to the extreme of all your mortal members, causing your senses almost to burst with the ecstasy of it. Then, will there come surge after surge of a mighty, resistless power rising within you, lifting you almost off the earth. Then, will you feel within the glory, the holiness, the majesty of my presence. And then, then you will know. I am God. You, when you have felt me thus in such moments within, when you have tasted my power, hearken to my wisdom, and know the ecstasy of my all-embracing love, no disease can touch, no circumstance can weaken, no enemy can conquer. For now you know I am within, and you always hereafter will turn to me in your need putting all your trust in me and allowing me to manifest my will. You, when you turn thus to me, will always find me an unfailing and ever-present help in time of need, for I will so fill you with the realization of my presence and of my power that you need only be still and allow me to do whatever you want done. Heal your ills and those of others. Illum your minds so you can see with my eyes the truth you seek, or perform perfectly the task which before seemed almost impossible of accomplishment. This knowledge, this realization will not come at once. It may not come for years. It may come tomorrow. It depends upon no one but you, not upon your personality with its human desires and human understanding, but upon the I am of you. God within. Who is it that causes the bud to open into the blossom? Who causes the chick to burst its shell? Who decides the day and the hour? It is the conscious, natural act of the intelligence within, my intelligence, 
directed by my will, bringing to fruition my idea and expressing it in the blossom and in the chick. But did the blossom and the chick have anything to do with it? No. Only as they submitted or united their will with mine and allowed me and my wisdom to determine the hour and the ripeness for action. And then only as they obey the impulse of my will to make the effort could they step forth into the new life. You may, with your personality, try a thousand times, a thousand times, to burst through the shell of your human consciousness. It will result only, if at all, in a breaking down of the doors I have provided between the world of tangible forms and the real world of intangible dreams, and the door being open. You then no longer can keep out intruders from your private domain without much trouble and suffering. But even through such suffering, you may gain the strength you lack and the wisdom needed to know that not until you yield up all desire for knowledge, for goodness, yes, for union with me, to benefit self, can you unfold your petals showing forth the perfect beauty of my divine nature and throw off the shell of your human personality and step forth into the glorious light of my heavenly kingdom. Therefore, I give you these directions now, at the beginning, that you may be learning how to recognize me. For here I promise you, if you follow and strive earnestly to comprehend and obey my instructions herein given, you shall very soon know me, and I will give you to comprehend all of my word wherever written, in book or teaching, in nature, or in fellow man. If there is much in what herein is written that seems contradictory, seek out my real meaning before discarding it. Do not leave a single paragraph or any one thought in it until all that is suggested becomes clear. But in all your seeking and all your striving, let it be with faith and trust in me, your true self within, and without being anxious about results, for the results are all in my keeping and I will take care of them. Your doubts and your anxieties are but of the personality, and if allowed to persist will lead only to failure and disappointment. I, life, God. If that which you have read has awakened a response within, and the soul of you yearns for more, then you are ready for what follows. If you still question or rebel, at the seeming assumption of divine authority for what is herein written, your intellect telling you it is but another attempt to beguile your mind with cunning suggestion and subtle sophistry, then you will receive no benefit from these words, for their meaning is as yet hidden from your mortal consciousness, and my word must come to you through other avenues of expression. It is well if your personality with its intellect impels you thus to question and rebel against authority you do not yet know to be mine. It is really I who cause your personality thus to rebel, for your personality with its proud sense of individuality is still needed by me to develop the mind and body strong enough that they can perfectly express me. Until you have become prepared to know me, it is but natural for your personality thus to question and rebel. Once you recognize my authority, that moment the undermining of the authority of the personality has begun. The days of its dominion are numbered, and you will more and more turn to me for help and guidance. Therefore be not dismayed. Read on, and the recognition will come. But know that you can read or not as you choose. But if you do it, it is really I who choose and not you. For you who seemingly choose not to read further, I have plans and in due season you shall learn that whatever you do or like or desire, it is I leading you through all the fallacies and illusions of the personality that you may finally awaken to their own reality and then turn to me as the one and only reality. Then these words will find a response within. Be still and know. I am God. Yes, I am that innermost part of you that sits within and calmly waits and watches, knowing neither time nor space 
for I am the Eternal and fill all space. I watch and wait for you to be done with your petty human follies and weaknesses, with your vain longings, ambitions, and regrets, knowing that you will come in time, and then you will turn to me, weary, discouraged, empty, and humble, and ask me to lead you, not realizing that I have been leading you all the time. Yes, I sit here within, quietly waiting for this, yet while waiting, it was really I who directed all your ways, who inspired in all your thoughts and acts, impersonally utilizing and manipulating each so as to eventually bring you and my other human expressions to a final conscious recognition of me. Yes, I have been within, always, deep within your heart. I have been with you through all, through your joys and heartaches, your successes and mistakes, through your evil doing, your shame, your crimes against your brother and against God, as you thought. I, whether you went straight ahead or straight aside, or stepped backward, it was I who brought you through. It was I who urged you on by the glimpse of me in the dim distance. It was I who lured you by a vision of me in some bewitching face or beautiful body, or intoxicating pleasure, or overpowering ambition. It was I who appeared before you within the garb of sin, or weakness, or greed, or sophistry, and drove you back into the arms of conscience, leaving you to struggle in its shadowy grasp, until you awakened to its impotence, rose up in disgust, and in inspiration of a new vision, tore off my mask. Yes, it is I who causes you to do all things, and if you can see it, it is I who do all things that you do, and all things that your brother does. For that in you and in him which is, is I, myself, for I am life. I am the innermost, the spirit, the animating cause of your being of all life, of all living things, both visible and invisible. There is nothing dead, for I, the impersonal one, am all that there is. I am infinite and wholly unconfined. The universe is my body. All the intelligence there is emanates from my mind. All the love there is flows from my heart. All the power there is is but my will in action. The threefold force manifesting as all wisdom, all love, all power, or if you will, as light, heat, and energy. That which holds together all forms in his back of and in all expressions and faces of life is but the manifestation of myself in the act or state of being. Nothing can be without manifesting and expressing some phase of me, who am not only the builder of all forms, but the dweller in each. In the heart of each I dwell, in the heart of the human, in the heart of the animal, in the heart of the flower, in the heart of the stone, in the heart of each I live and move and have my being, and from out the heart of each I send forth that phase of me I desire to express, and which manifest in the outer world as a stone, a flower, an animal, a man. Is there nothing, then, but this great I? Am I to be permitted no individuality for myself? I hear you ask. No, there is nothing. Absolutely nothing that is not a part of me, controlled and ruled eternally by me, the one infinite reality. As for your so-called individuality, that is nothing but your personality still seeking to maintain a separate existence. Soon you shall know there is no individuality apart from my individuality, and all personality shall fade away into my divine personality. Yes, and you shall soon reach that state of awakening where you will get a glimpse of my impersonality, and you will then desire no individuality, no separation for yourself, for you will see that it is but one more illusion of the personality. Consciousness, Intelligence, Will Yes, 
I know the many mixed thoughts that have been crowding into your mind as you read. The doubts and eager questionings. The vague fear that imperceptibly changed into a growing hope that this glimmering of my meaning, which has begun to penetrate the darkness of your human intellect, may shine brighter so that you can see clearly the truth which you instinctively feel is hidden beneath my words. Again I say, this I am, speaking herein, is the real self of you, and in reading these words it is necessary that you realize it is you, your own self, that is speaking them to your human consciousness in order fully to comprehend their meaning. I also repeat this is the same I am that is the life and spirit animating all living things in the universe, from the tiniest atom to the greatest sun that this I am is the intelligence in you and in your brother and sister, and it is likewise the intelligence which causes everything to live and grow and become that which is their destiny to be. Perhaps you cannot yet understand how this I am can be, at one and the same time, the I am of you and the I am of your brother, and also the intelligence of a stone, the plant, and the animal. You will see this, however, if you follow these my words and obey the instructions herein given. For I will soon bring to your consciousness a light that will illumine the deepest recesses of your mind and drive away all the clouds of human misconceptions, ideas and opinions that now darken your intellect. If you read on and strive earnestly to comprehend my meaning, so listen carefully. I am you the real self of you, all that you really are. That's what you think you are, you are not. This is only an illusion, a shadow of the real you which is I, your mortal divine self. I am that point of consciousness localized in your human mind which calls itself I. I am that I. But that which you call your consciousness is in reality my consciousness thin down to suit the capacity of your human mind. It is still my consciousness, and when you can drive from your mind all its human misconceptions, ideas and opinions, and can cleanse and empty it utterly, so that my consciousness can have a chance to express freely, then you will recognize me, and you will know that you are nothing, being only a focal center of my consciousness an avenue of medium through which I can express my meaning in matter. Perhaps you cannot see this yet, and of course cannot believe it until I fully prepare your mind by convincing your intellect of its truth. You have been told that each cell of your body has a consciousness and an intelligence of its own, that were it not for this consciousness, it could not do the work it so intelligently does. Each cell is surrounded by millions of other cells, each intelligently doing its own work, and each evidently controlled by the united consciousness of all these cells, forming a group intelligence, which directs and controls this work. This group intelligence apparently being the intelligence of the organ which the cells comprising it form. Likewise, there are other group intelligences in other organs each containing other millions of cells, and all these organs make up your physical body. Now, you know you are the intelligence that directs the work of the organs of your body, whether this directing is done consciously or unconsciously, and that each cell of each organ is really a focal center of this directing intelligence, and that when this intelligence is withdrawn, the cells fall apart. Your physical body dies and exists no more as a living organism. Who is this you who directs and controls the activities of your organs and consequently of each cell composing them? You cannot say it is your human or personal self who does this, for you of yourself consciously can control the action of scarcely a single organ of your body. It must then be this impersonal I am of you which is you, and yet is not you. Listen, you, the I am of you, 
are to me what the cell's consciousness of your body is to your I am consciousness. You are a cell, as it were, of my body, and your consciousness as one of my cells is to me what the consciousness of one of the cells of your body is to you. Therefore, it must be that the consciousness of the cell of your body is my consciousness, even as your consciousness is my consciousness. And therefore, we must be one in consciousness, the cell, you, and I. You cannot now consciously direct or control a single cell of your body, but when you can at will enter into the consciousness of the I am of you, and know its identity with me. Then you can control not only every cell of your body, but that of any body you might wish to control. What happens when your consciousness no longer controls the cells of your body? The body disintegrates, the cells separate, and their work for the time being is finished. But do the cells die or lose consciousness? No, they simply sleep or rest for a period and after a while unite with other cells and form new combinations, and sooner or later appear in other manifestations of life, perhaps mineral, perhaps vegetable, perhaps animal, showing that they still retain their original consciousness and but await the action of my will to join together in a new organism, to do the work of the new consciousness through which I desire to manifest then apparently this cell consciousness is a consciousness common to all bodies, mineral, vegetable, animal, human, each cell fitted perhaps by experience for a certain general kind of work? Yes, this cell consciousness is common to every cell of every body, no matter what its kind, because it is an impersonal consciousness having no purpose other than doing the work allotted to it. It lives only to work wherever needed. When through with building one form, it takes up the work of building another, under whatever consciousness I desire it to serve. Thus it is, likewise with you. You, as one of the cells of my body, have a consciousness that is my consciousness, an intelligence that is my intelligence, even a will that is my will. You have none of these for yourself or of yourself. They are all mine and for my use only. Now, my consciousness and my intelligence and my will are wholly impersonal and therefore are common with you and all the cells of my body, even as they are common with all the cells of your body. Now, I am the directing intelligence of all, the animating spirit, the life, the consciousness of all matter, of all substance. If you can see it, you, the real you, the impersonal you, are in all and are one with all, are in me and are one with me, just as I am in you and in all, and thereby am expressing my reality through you and through all. This will, which you call your will, is likewise no more yours personally than is this consciousness and this intelligence of your mind and of the cells of your body yours. It is but that small portion of my will which I permit the personal you to use. Just as fast as you awaken to recognition of a certain power or faculty within you and begin consciously to use it, do I allow you that much more of my infinite power. All power and its use is but so much recognition and understanding of the use of my will. Your will and all your powers are only phases of my will, which I supply to suit your capacity to use it. Were I to entrust you with the full power of my will, before you know how consciously to use it, it would annihilate your body utterly. To test your strength and more often to show you what the misuse of my power does to you, I at times allow you to commit a sin so-called, or to make a mistake. I even permit you to become inflated with the sense of my presence within you, when it manifests as a consciousness of my power, my intelligence, my love, and I let you take these and use them for your own personal purposes, but not for long, for not being strong enough to control them. They soon take the bit in their teeth 
run away with you, throw you down in the mire, and disappear from your consciousness for the time being. Always I am there to pick you up after the fall, although you do not know it at the time. First straightening you out, and then starting you onward again, by pointing out the reason for your fall. And finally, when you are sufficiently humbled, causing you to see that these powers accruing to you by the conscious use of my will, my intelligence, and my love, are allowed you only for use in my service, and not at all for your own personal ends. Do the cells of your body, the muscles of your arm, think to set themselves up as having a separate will from your will? or a separate intelligence from your intelligence. No, they know no intelligence but yours, no will but yours. After a while, it will be that you will realize you are only one of the cells of my body, and that your will is not your will, but mine. That what consciousness and what intelligence you have are mine wholly, and that there is no such person as you you personally being only a physical form containing a human brain, which I created for the purpose of expressing in matter an idea, a certain phase of which I could express best only in that particular form. All this may be difficult for you now to accept, and you may protest very strenuously that it cannot be that every instinct of your nature rebels against such yielding and subordinating yourself to an unseen and unknown power, however impersonal or divine. Fear not. It is only your personality that thus rebels. If you continue to follow and study my words, all will soon be made clear, and I will surely open up to your inner understanding many wonderful truths that now are impossible for you to comprehend. Your soul will rejoice, sing glad praises, and will bless these words for the message they bring. The key. Now, you may not even yet know I am, or believe that I am really you, or that I am likewise your brother and your sister, and that you are all parts of me and one with me. You may not realize that the souls of you and your brother and sister, the only real and imperishable parts of the mortal you, are but different phases of me and expression in what is called nature. Likewise, you may not realize that you and your brothers and sisters are phases or attributes of my divine nature, just as your human personality, with its mortal body, mind, and intellect, is a phase of your human nature. No, you do not realize this yet. But I speak of it now that you may know the signs when they begin to appear to your consciousness as they surely will. In order to recognize these signs, all that now follows must be considered carefully and studied, and should not be passed by until my meaning, at least in some degree, is grasped. Once you fully understand the principle I here set down, then all my message will become clear and comprehensible. I first give you the key that will unlock every mystery that now hides from you the secret of my being. This key when you once know how to use it, will open the door to all wisdom and all power in heaven and earth. Yea, it will open the door to the kingdom of heaven. And then you have but to enter in to become consciously one with me. This key is to think is to create. Or as you think in your heart, so it is with you. Stop and meditate on this that it may get firmly fixed in your mind. A thinker is a creator. A thinker lives in a world of his own conscious creation. When you once know how to think, you can create at will anything you wish, whether it be a new personality, a new environment, or a new world. Let us see if you cannot grasp some of the truths hidden and controlled by this key. You have been shown how all consciousness is one, and how it is all my consciousness, and yet is also yours and likewise that of the animal, the plant, the stone, and the invisible cell. You have seen how this consciousness is controlled by my will, which causes the invisible cells to unite and form the various organisms for expression and use of the different centers of intelligence through which I desire to express. 
but you cannot yet see how you can direct and control the consciousness of the cells of your own body, not to speak of those other bodies, even if you and I and they are all one in consciousness and intelligence. By paying special attention to what follows, however, you now may be enabled to see this. Have you ever taken the pains to study out what is consciousness? How it seems to be an impersonal state of awareness, of waiting to serve or be directed or used by some power latent in and intimately related to itself? How man seems to be merely the highest type of organism containing this consciousness, which is directed and used by this power within itself? that this power latent in man's consciousness and in all consciousness is nothing but will. My will. For you know that all power is but the manifestation of my will. Now you have been told that in the beginning I created man in my image and likeness, after which I breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. By creating man in my image and likeness, I created an organism capable of expressing all of my consciousness and all of my will, which means likewise, all of my power, my intelligence, and my love. Therefore, I made it perfect in the beginning, patterning it after my own perfection. When I breathed into man's organism my breath, it became alive with me, for then it was I breathed into it my will not from without, but from within, from the kingdom of heaven within, where always I am. Ever afterward I breathed and lived and had my being within man, for I created him in my image and likeness only for that purpose. The proof of this man does not and cannot breathe of himself. Something far greater than his conscious natural self lives in his body and breathes through his lungs. A mighty power within his body thus uses the lungs, even as it uses the heart to force the blood containing life and truth through the lungs to every cell of the body, as it uses the stomach and other organs to digest and assimilate food to make blood, tissue, hair and bone, as it uses the brain, the tongue, the hands and feet to think and say and do everything that man does. This power is my will to be and live in man. Therefore, whatever man is, I am. And whatever man does, or you do, I do. And whatever you say or think, it is I who say or think it through your organism. You are also told that when man was thus possessed of my breath, he was given dominion over all the kingdoms of the earth, which means he was made lord of the earth, the sea, the air, and the ethers. And all beings living in all these kingdoms paid him homage and were subject to his will. This naturally was so, for I, within man's consciousness and within all consciousness, am always manifesting my will. And I, the Lord and ruler of man's organism, am likewise the Lord and ruler of all organisms in which consciousness dwells. As all consciousness is my consciousness, and it dwells, wherever there is life, and as there is no substance in which there is not life, then my consciousness must be in everything, in earth, water, air, and fire, and therefore must fill all space. In fact, it is space, or that which man calls space. Then my will, being the power latent in all consciousness, must reach everywhere. Therefore man's will, which is but a focalization of my will, must likewise reach everywhere. Hence, the consciousness of all organisms, including his own, is subject to man's direction and control. All it needs is for him consciously to realize this. Realize that I, the impersonal self within him, am constantly directing, controlling, and using the consciousness of all organisms every moment of every day of his life. I am doing this by and through his thinking. I am doing this with and through man's organism. Man thinks he thinks, but it is I, the real I of him, who thinks through his organism. Through this thinking and his spoken word, I accomplish all that man does, and make man and his world all that they are. It makes no difference if man and his world are not what he supposes they are. 
They are just what I created them to be for my purpose. But if I do all the thinking, man does not and cannot think, I hear you say. Yes, here seems to be a mystery, but it will be revealed to you, if you note carefully what follows. For I am going to teach you, man, how to think.